Hello there guys, it's Captain Invisible here, and welcome back to some more Napoleon Total War Online action. Um, we are on the Pyramids map, if you can't see by the uh, Pyramids in the background there through the uh, Sandstorm. Um, and this is a really pretty map, I really enjoy this one. Um, there's all these sort of sand dunes that really make line of sight actually pretty hard. Uh, looking down here, you know, you've got all of these your little nobbles that kind of, you know, all these dunes and things that kind of block your um, shots, uh, which is uh, very difficult to sort of manage on this map. Um, really interesting though, really enjoy this map, and there's even this little town up here, this little sort of hamlet, uh, little oasis of, uh, of mead and bread it looks like. So a little supply point for our um, for our armies, and certainly this terrain is actually going to be the mo the Im most important part of this uh, map because of how high it is, um, the high ground, the cover, the your forest down here, and then over here it's you know, impossible to to approach. So if you can get some units right up here, you can actually shoot at the enemy without being charged by cavalry. It's a very very interesting point of this map. Um, so, I am in command over here as uh, Spain. Um, the reason why I've got it paused is because uh, this battle does start very, very quickly, as you can, uh, as you can already tell by my deployment, uh, if you notice my, uh, my units all the way up there. Um, but yeah, I'm in command of Spain, um, and this was suggested to me by uh, Lost in Nepal. Uh, he... Um, He's been playing a lot of Napoleon recently, and he he sort of mentioned that uh, Spain was a pretty good faction, and that I should give them a go. Um, I haven't been too interested in playing as Spain in the past, and the reason for that is they are very mediocre in terms of factions, and uh, their units are kind of outclassed. You know, they're kind of below average units. They are very outclassed by a lot of factions. Um, and this is, it's a common problem that I have with factions like Spain, that the, Spain's main advantage, or its supposed main advantage, is the fact that you can have guerrilla deployable units, so units that can deploy outside of your deployment zone, which is what uh, these guys are up here. These are my, uh, my Cazadores de Cataluna. And my uh, Voluntarios de la Coruna. So these guys are my guerrilla deployable units. Um, and I've sort of deployed them all the way up here in the uh, town to sort of secure it for my Prussian uh, ally. Um, so yeah, they, they are good for this kind of situation, but because you can deploy these units, um, they're, not, they're not that much better than standard line units. And uh, light infantry, so they they cost a lot more than what they should simply because you can deploy them outside of your deployment zone without being that much better in uh, in combat. And also because the because you get deploy guerrilla deployable units, uh, the game sort of says, okay, you know, you can deploy you know some some of your units anywhere. So we are going to weaken the rest of your units to, to balance things out and that is a really bad situation because whereas line infantry is uh, useful in all situations these guys are only useful if there is a bit of terrain that you need to capture or if there's a forest that you can sort of deploy them and hide them in or if there's you know, a cliff that you can deploy them on it's you know, it's very much situational for the guerrillas so i don't like factions that can deploy guerrilla guerrilla units simply because you know, even though you can deploy these guerrilla units and they're great the game sort of expects you to use them and use them well because the rest of the units are pure garbage <laughs> so you know, I, I was very put off by spain initially but actually you know, after doing some research they are a pretty uh, a pretty solid faction um, these fusiliers are not as bad as I thought they were. Um, despite being cheap, they, they kind of hold their own quite well. Um, they also have uh, lancers. You know, you got to bring the lancers. They do uh, quite a lot on the charge. And um, 
and they do have some elite units where my guys are these guys are the uh oh bit of a camera bug there <laughs> um oops <laughs> doing it again <laughs> these um William guards are just so pretty really really nice uniforms with the little crests on their hats and little uh, feathers really are very nice units so yes they're just um just a really nice faction with a lot of uh, a lot of these fusiliers very cheap you know, I'll give that to Spain they do have a lot of cheap units you know their uh, cavalry is um about the most expensive thing you can get and the fusiliers are very cheap about 600 for these guys as opposed to sort of the 700 that you have to spend on a german fusilier so you know go figure and then my uh, general check out this guy's name this guy is fantastic this is um is that correct yeah, I think that's correct. So this is uh, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta. So he is my um, three-star um, Spanish general. And that name is just so, so epic. You know, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta. <laughs> and I hope I am pronouncing that right. I have been saying it non-stop all day just to get it inside my head. Um, but that's this guy here. He is uh, a very fancy, uh, fancy general there. So that is my army. Um, again, my ally is oh, my ally is up here playing as Prussia, and he's just gone for a big blob. <laughs> he's got a lot of these hussars, uh, lancers, uh, a lot of musketeers, and some foot guards in the mix, with some um, Prussian fusiliers as um, as a skirmish force. Uh, Count von von Genesanu, Genesanu. Don't understand where the G and the N are supposed to go together, except sort of in in Nome, where you don't pronounce the G. Nyasenu, Nyasenu. A very interesting one. But yeah, he's blobbed up his units because he obviously wants to rush this hill before the other British player um, arrives up. Um, he's got two units of light dragoons. Uh, a lot of these foot, wanting to rush the hill and do, sort of deploy up here. And then he's got some more units over here, some uh, Highland Foot, um, some of the co uh, the 88th Cohort Rangers. Let's check these guys out. These guys look pretty uh, fancy with their fancy uniforms, ready to uh, do do battle. And then he's got some Foot Guards up here. So very nice, uh, quite a small army. Um, he's probably uh, spent a lot on his upgrades and things. And then we've got this British player who's brought some of these uh, these pretty nice cavalry units. Ooh. We've got the Scots Grey on this, the Royal Scots Grey should I say on this flank. They have some sweet hats, really nice. And on these grey, grey horses, these are really pretty units. Pretty good as well. And then we've got the foot guards over here, uh, the, sorry, the dragoon guard should I say. Um, they look pretty sweet as well. They look like the um, horse guards um, that, that that sort of protect the uh, protect uh, Buckingham Palace. They sort of uh, ride around and uh, just be badasses. And then we've got some King's German Legion Lightfoot. Uh, I think two units of those, and they're Lightfoot. Some Fencibles, and then there's a lot of these Foot Highland Foot. Just pretty standard for. Uh, for Britain, Coldstream Guards, the uh, the notorious Coldstream Guards in the back here, ready to uh, do justice against the uh, against our Spanish forces, and then some uh, foot guards, and then the Black Watch as well. Check out these guys with their with the kilts and the uh, the black uh, black hats, the um, headdress ready to do some uh, some damage and then there's just some standard dragoons uh, up here so we're gonna go over to this village because it apparently everyone wants this village um i've already captured it but we are gonna see uh how the enemy um how the enemy is going to take this so immediately i noticed that britain is wanting to rush up this section 
and try and capture this village. He's already got his cavalry up and this was quite scary for me because I could have literally lost all of my uh, all of my guerrilla units here so I decided to rush my units back sort of here into a better position um, and just let put the Prussian cavalry try and protect my uh, my poor guerrilla units. So we're gonna vacate the uh, vacate the town and sort of almost give it up to the to the Brits. But uh, because of this cliff, he has to go around here and around here. So actually, it gives us enough time to pull our units back. Um, fortunately, these light dragoons were gonna go for a charge, but get stopped by the uh, Prussian cavalry. So they have to charge into these Prussians, and it becomes a bit of a cluster. The uh, the hussars uh, going into the light dragoons, and then these lancers come in, and they're going to absolutely obliterate these uh, these British dragoons on the charge. Uh, lancers have incredible charge against cavalry. Uh, you do not want to mess with them in in melee. So the cavalry fight has ensued on this flank. And the Brits have moved up their lines danger close and they're going to take some shots against the now engaged cavalry, uh, probably killing a lot of their own men. But the, uh, the British uh, don't care that much about their cavalry, they're gonna, just going to slaughter everything. Um, and then the Prussians are going to try and get into the rest of these uh, foot with their cavalry. Um, but it's going to form square and stop that charge. But that does give him a chance to bring up his own musketeers. And um, I've repositioned my uh, my guerrilla units, my guerrilla line, to take some shots against the uh, the Brits and sort of protect the uh, Prussian flank here and just uh, just get some line of sight against these uh, these Brits who are going to duke it out with the Prussians. Check out this line fight here with the dead horses in the middle. The Prussians and the Brits are going to fight it out. The Prussians, uh, the Prussians are slightly weaker than the British foot, but they are um, they are still good at shooting. So you know, that's not a big issue. I think the major issue was my army because my army is completely outclassed by Britain. Um, their foot is significantly better than mine, their light infantry is significantly better. Our cavalry is pretty even, uh, especially with those, those Royal Scots Greys, so, but uh, yeah, a very tough fight. Um, so whilst that's going on, I am over on this side running some cavalry harassment into these light foot. Uh, I need to even the odds as much as possible, so my lancers are going to come in and try and silence these, uh, these King's German Legion foot. And then I'm going to move off to try and engage these rifles as well, trying to avoid the square. But the Royal Scots Greys are going to come in and do some justice. Our men are running. And I think that's one of my cavalry units that's sort of fleeing the battle. And then again goes one of my... Uh, my lancers um, but we did disrupt the British lines enough for me to sort of move right the way over to my ally and I'm going to position myself right the way next to him just so he can support me against the British. This fight's still going on my uh, my uh, Volunteros are actually doing pretty well against these uh, Brits um, really giving some supporting fire for the Prussian musketeers. Uh, there is some riflemen over here that have been plucking away at my flank and you're really damaging my uh, my uh, units here. Um, but we are getting some uh, some sweet shots and it is weakening the British lines. They are breaking um, due to the flanking fire of all these Prussians and then my own uh, Volunteros. So you're a very great position here for Prussia and uh, he's almost captured this position. Grab some foot guards. If those guys actually charge down here, they could actually break all these units. Um, foot guards are pretty good in uh, in melee, so this could have been a very dangerous situation for us. So we're gonna open up, 
try and protect the uh, bread basket of, uh, of this village. Uh, not let it fall into the hands of the Prussians or the Spanish. So there were some British units up here that uh, Prussia's trying to sort of fire at. So I've got my uh, my other guerrilla units, these Cazadores, into a position on this flank, uh, being supported by some light infantry of my uh, from my other flank. Unfortunately, the uh, the terrain here is quite bad, so a lot of the shots are going into the uh, the sand dunes here. As you can see, it's not the best position, but. Um, at least we sort of exchanging fire. You know, there's no way that the uh, that the Brits can kill us from that angle either. So it's kind of a, a standoff. I believe these guys aren't in range yet. I believe they have to move up a bit further. But as soon as they do, they do have actually a pretty nice line of sight against the uh, the Highland Foot up there. And we do have some British rifles here. I might have to move up my light infantry a bit more. Just to uh, just to fire at them, just to you know, keep them back. So Prussia is still pushing this flank. Uh, more Brits trying to push up these uh, foot guards, trying to you know, push up against these musketeers, but they're going to suffer against all the firepower that the uh, Prussians can bring to bear. And then up here we started a cavalry fight with uh, the British Dragoons. Um, we got an initial, in, initially a really good charge with these Lancers against the Dragoons. But uh, being double teamed it's not going on very well. But we do have the uh, heavily armoured um, Corazios Espan Espandis. And these guys are going to rip through these Dragoons. And then probably rip through these Dragoons. <laughs> the Dragoons really don't want to mess with these guys. These guys are heavily armoured and will do some damage. We even force them to farm square. That's uh, that's going to be good for our light infantry up here that have quite a nice position against the uh, the British. Yeah, a nice line of sight is going to be quite good for them. And our lines are just engaging light infantry on light infantry. Um, I say up here we managed to catch this uh, this Highland foot uh, out in the open and got a few kills. Uh, in fact, it's way out of position. It's taken a lot of damage from our light units. So I decided to reposition this other light infantry to try and take some shots against these uh, these light foot because we are getting sort of a little bit overwhelmed on this flank. Now we're going to push up the uh, the fusiliers, the uh, the line infantry to get into range, and there's going to be some nasty volleys from these guys all the way down this line. Just such a beautiful, beautiful firefight. Some of the shots are hit in the dunes, but these talents but are gonna take a nasty volley from our uh, from our fusiliers. And these fencibles get right into a position to uh, harass our lines. Uh, they are kind of militia units, so their job is just to get in the way. But I do have flanking fire over here, and my fusiliers are going to be able to uh, to handle them in melee, and deal with them, and get rid of them. But I believe it does allow him to move up his. Uh, this Highland foot a bit a bit closer, which is going to be a quite dangerous position. And what you can see I've done here is I've double up my uh, double up my lines, so I've got two units against one, two units against one up here as well. Two, two units against one, and then my two lights against uh, some of these foot. 
so I've got a really nice um, amount of firepower coming down against these units. I'm start to break some of these uh, foot here. Unfortunately, this poor fusilier is taking a lot of damage from these Highland foot. I would expect nothing less from the British. We've got some cavalry coming in here. These, the, uh, these are the Dragoon Guards coming right the way in. So we're going to form square here just to hold them off. They did get quite a nice charge off against our light units. But uh, he's going to try and charge through uh, to get to my other light units. And it's going to put them into range of some more firepower from my uh, fusiliers. So it was a nice, nice charge. It's supposed to route one of my uh, light infantry. It might route the other one as well. But I think we're finally going to see off this, uh, this dragoon guard. It's, uh, it's damage is done. Running, and then the Walloon guards pull up. The Walloon guards are, uh, are not going to be messing around here. Not sure what these guys are firing at. This guy seems to be firing over this way and these guys seem to be firing sort of at this line so God knows what they're trying to do but yeah the Wallum guards are not going to mess around. All these bodies here from the fusiliers. An exchange of fire against the Highland foot is going to probably see them off shortly. And I managed to position another unit of Walloon guards up here to help break this flank and help secure a, a, a staging point for some outflanking. Defensibles going in again. Poor defensibles, poor, me poor meat screens. They just get told to charge in under heavy fire and against Walloon guards and expect to be able to do anything. But in melee, these poor fencibles are not going to do a thing against the Wyoming guards. And then we're going to get a little parting, uh, parting shot as well. These poor, poor bastards. <laughs> anyway, oop. Prussia's managed to finally secure this position. And the Brits were just in a really bad position there. And uh, and it's gonna now uh, it's gonna now eat a very nice charge from these uh, Royal Scots Greys. I say these guys do not mess around. They are pretty dangerous cavalry. But there is support, some supporting fire from my uh, from my fusiliers. And now we're gonna uh, open up against these foot guards and then the Black Watch as well. Managed to get a nice flank on these poor black watch, and these guys are going to uh, to eat fire. Really nasty volleys from the uh, from the Welling guards. I think that's them forming square for some strange reason. They're just going to eat even more fire from the Welling guards in a, in such a tight formation. Uh, Napoleon's camera, <laughs> way too sensitive. <laughs> uh, so my fusiliers managed to send off these foot guards, which is pretty surprising because the, uh, the foot guards are pretty, uh, pretty good in melee. I'm just going to deal with them, kill off the last of these uh, these guys uh, before routing, <laughs> before before bringing off the field. <laughs> so at least they are, uh, at least they said. Uh, Farewell to the foot guards before they uh, they left. Now the Prussians have dominance over the flank, and we managed to kill the uh, one of the British generals with our uh, uh, Carassios. So we're going to use them to uh, to probably kill the other the other general here. It's 
you can see the lines of Spanish troops on the uh, on the bridge. British general is going to uh, going to hold on until the last man. It looks like four men, and eventually he starts to waver. We have killed their general. Damn, they finally managed to kill him. <laughs> it's from, he was probably the last man in that unit, so very well held there by the general. And that was the battle. Um, very well played by my opponents. I mean, you know, there were really good spots in this battle. Um, really. Uh, really nice guys and uh, as I say I, I, com I command anyone that can lose a battle and still say that they they enjoyed it because uh, obviously the enjoyment of a battle is not in the winning it's in the taking part so you know uh, I really um, I'm a really big um, you know, just a lot of respect for these guys uh, for being so such good sports about this um, but yeah um, two British opponents that that was very scary when I saw that because, as I say, I knew I would be outclassed significantly. Um, I knew that Prussia would have to sort of carry this team, but um, it turns out that uh, you know the Spanish still have a few tricks up the sleeve um, in this engagement. Um, Kills-wise, uh, my guerrilla units, the um, Casadores and the the other ones here the Volunteros uh, 65 for the Volunteros and 27 for the Casadores so you know not too bad uh, I say it can be a bit hit and miss with uh, guerrilla deployable units but um, they did quite well so you know props to them uh, the Carasios uh, 67 kills not great but they only cost about 870 so they, they're not too expensive um, and they did the job quite well. There was still you know, some about 21, 22 of them left, so um, yeah, they did okay for what for what they were. My fusiliers, I was well impressed with. Uh, 107, 97, uh, 62 on this one, um, 105, 71. 133, no, 113 should I say, uh, 15 on this one, but this this one I lost two units, I think this was my reserve, it was kind of a reserve unit, so, you know, really good by these guys, and these guys only cost 600, compared to the British, uh, uh, 700 and 760, I think the British lines cost, so, you know, it's, you know, it's a huge difference, it's 160, and for a unit that can do do that, <laughs> is, uh, is not not to be messed with. Uh, Gregorio Garcia de la Cuesta, <laughs> never get tired of uh, saying that name. Um, obviously not getting any kills because he was in the back trying to be, uh, trying to be uh, a good general and not get himself killed. <laughs> Um, the Hussars, uh, those were one of the units that charged into the lines at the beginning. Uh, 41 kills, not bad from those guys. Uh, 22 and 28 by the Lance Ross. Again, just there, just to distract. So, you know, a good. Uh, they, 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 they did the job just absolutely fine. You know, no, no problems. And then the light infantry, uh, 89, 57, 57, 52. Uh, again, not bad from those guys. They. Uh, they performed quite quite well, um, considering they were up against Britain as well. That has superior light infantry. Uh, they they performed very very well. Very impressed. Uh, I say the Von Terros 65, and then the Wallen Guards. Check check this guy out. 153 kills. Um, I think that was the one in the centre of the field, killing off those Highland foot, and that is very very impressive from those guys. Really. Um, Really impressed with the Wallen guards at being a very nice uh, guard unit. Um, I think they're they're quite a, they're quite weak for a guard, but uh, as I say, they perform quite ad uh, admirably here. And then 55 for the, from this unit, uh, only losing 11 and 7 men. So these guys could have done a lot more in this battle. So very impressive from those guys. Excellent, so a, a very interesting battle. Uh, thank you again for, from uh, 
last in Nepal for uh, suggesting Spain. Uh, they are a very nice faction and I'll have to play with them more in the future. Um, but uh, thank you very much for watching guys and I shall see you all in the next video.